move on to what is essentially uh, one of the most well-known horror movies, often called a masterpiece, as it should be. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Uh, I love those. These are the uh, iconic moments, steelbooks. I try to get most of them. Stanley Kubrick's has a few, actually, and uh, Scorsese has got quite a few of them, too. Uh, they're beautiful. They're a little plain. That's one of the crit criticisms they get, but I, I just love how minimalist they are and it's, it's a beautiful for me it's a beautiful looking steel book you know we got the axe and that's it um yeah um i'm not gonna get into the movie too much it because at this point what else can i say about this movie it is fantastic it is very atmospheric it's got those crazy crazy camera shots by uh, kubrick you know um it is a masterpiece of, of the horror genre. And I know Stephen King's not too crazy about some of the changes that were made in this adaptation. But nevertheless, it is a fantastic movie. Um, and should definitely definitely be seen by any uh, fans of the genre. Which brings us to uh, the sequel, which very recently released in 2019. Uh, with Ewan McGregor as uh, an older Danny Torrance. Doctor Sleep. Directed by Mike Flanagan, 2019. I personally loved this movie. It had a lot to, to do, and it, it was going to be hard to live up to The Shining, but I think it did a fantastic job, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not going to get too much into the story, you know, again, but I think it's fantastic. I think it is definitely worth your time. It's, it's a shame that uh, it didn't um, do so well at the box office, but... I think it's a fantastic movie. It doesn't take anything away from The Shining, but it builds up on it. And, uh, yeah. Definitely a solid, very, very solid movie. I love this one. Uh, okay, so I'm trying to keep it, like I said, in the, the yearly orders. But when there's a sequel involved, I'll put it right next to it. You know, so the same for Halloween of the original 78. But I've got the sequels together, so... Going back to 1980, we've got the original Friday the 13th right here, which uh, I kept sealed this one because, uh, well, I got so many Blu-rays and DVDs version of this movie. And again, you know, recently got the uh, Scream Factory big box set right here. So, yeah, uh, for the anniversary, uh, it is a very cool, you know, this is the original artwork for the movie. So that's always nice. And uh, yeah. The original and arguably the best <laughs> of the franchise, uh, you know, with that, that twist and their ending. And, uh, sorry, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, <laughs> for those who still haven't seen it 40 years later, um, it's, a, it's a fun little uh, campy little 80s movie, kind of a ripoff of Halloween, uh, although I feel like it's got enough to stand on its own. I did enjoy it, and I still do enjoy it, which then brings us to... The 2009 remake, which I think it gets a lot of hate, but I would say it's one of the better, less crappy <laughs> remakes uh, of the, the 2000s. Um, it's not bad. I'll say this is not bad at all. This one I also kept sealed into the case right there. It's a Best Buy release because uh, I've got so many other versions of it. So if this is not a bad remake. I'll say this. Uh, definitely better than a lot of those latter sequels you know like Jason X or Jason Goes to Hell <laughs> uh, yeah okay 1981 uh, Galaxy of Terror now this yeah uh, look positives I'll say the settings the visuals this is one of those uh, Roger Corman produced movies so if you know who Roger Corman is you know <laughs> sort of what to expect a little bit there um, it's not horrible but it's definitely not great and it's one that i'm don't think i'll really ever watch again um like i said the, the positives for me are the visuals the atmosphere was cool uh it's got uh robert england <laughs> in it before the nightmare movies and so but um this just feels like a sort of like a, a terrible star trek like an an old tos star trek episode with some some blood and gore and and kind of a weird um, rapey scene in there with some, some bugs. I don't know what's up with like rapey scenes with like insects or animals in the 80s. But yeah, uh, this definitely not a very good movie. I'll be honest. Uh, one of my least favorites here that I have on Steelbooks. 
I got it because, again, you know, Screen Factory. Uh, but, and I, I was, you know, always curious about those older 80s movies. I grew up with them, but this was one that I'd never seen before. And I gotta say, it's not very good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now this is a very good movie. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, in 1981, we got three werewolves movies. And this is the first one we got right here, The Hauling by Joe Dante. And I personally love this movie. It, it's, a, of course, again, you know, cheesy, uh, but I think it's fantastic. I love the premise of it. I'm not going to spoil it because uh, just if I try to talk about the plot, uh, I'll end up spoiling it. But it, this is a very cool werewolf movie. If you like werewolves, you got to check this one out. Um, which kind of brings us to uh, the next movie that I'm going to talk about right here. Released also in 1981, just a little later uh, in the year, which is an American werewolf in London. And of course, this movie, um, we were talking about practical effects earlier with John Carpenter's The Thing. And this one right here is another one that's very iconic when it comes to that. We always hear about the transformation scene. And it is indeed, you know, the stuff of nightmares. Um, not Maybe not on par as, uh, you know, The Thing. But it is still like extremely well made and I would say not just a transformation scene but for me some of the makeup like you'll see uh, the main character's friend you know in the hospital later I actually don't want to spoil that but yeah uh, the makeup in this movie is pretty terrific also but if I can just for a second go back to the howling uh, that was released just before and I would have to be perfectly honest and say that I prefer the transformation scene and the howling and I know that's not a popular opinion but uh, it's just it's a bit it's a bit more drawn out. It's very slow, but it, it's so creepy and uh, look, they're both great. And and it's obviously they get compared a lot. They're both very solid movies. They're different movies. But I'll say if you like American London and Werewolf and you haven't seen The Howling, definitely check out The Howling and vice versa. You know both movies are great. Um, yeah. Okay. Moving on. Take a little sip and we get to my personal favorite horror franchise of all time and that is the evil dead sam raimi's the evil dead i just can never get enough of this um it is just so brutal it's it's intense and campy and funny and in your face and I just, the plot of it too, of the original movie is so simple, you know, the the, the the whole Book of the Dead stuff, but it works, and for me, it this is it, this is my favorite horror movie, pretty much ever, I mean, I, that, and you know, I, I've got Cabin in the Woods also is one of my favorites ever, but um, the, this franchise is definitely my favorite horror franchise, uh, as a kid, I was obsessed with horror movies. My parents were not a big fan of it, obviously, but uh, one of my uncles, who's a, who's a big movie fan, he bought me the VHS for Evil Dead 2 as a kid. And yeah, <laughs> that was it. I fell in love with it. Um, Evil Dead 2 is just so insane. It's just so out of this world. It, and those practical effects, again, there's, there's just so much fun. They're having so much fun with the gore and everything. And it's so creative, you know, the where it goes. And uh, yeah, man, y y if you haven't seen those, you got to check it out. They are legendary at this point. You know, the, the, the Evil Dead franchise with Bruce Campbell. And, uh, you know, all of them directed by Sam Raimi. Amazing movies. Some of my favorites ever. And then that brings us to the third and the final movie in the franchise. Well, the final movie with Bruce Campbell. the Sort of the, the third one in the trilogy. Army of Darkness, this is a Scream Factory steelbook as well. And even though I have these movies, uh, on, you know, so many versions, I just had to unwrap it. Uh, this has got the director's cut in it and the 4K scan. And yeah, I just had to go ahead and unbox it. Um, you know, there's part of me as a kid, I always wished that this movie was a bit more gory. I understand they were trying to get that PG-13 and they didn't even get it in the end. It was still rated R, but... Yeah, I do wish that it was a bit more in-your-face gory, but it's a lot of fun, and this is a movie that I've seen so many times as a kid. 
this one as opposed to the first two it's a little lighter and uh, you would see it on TV quite often but it's great it's it's, it's a lot of fun uh, and so yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right back and but yeah the evil that is really my friend horror franchise <laughs> as as you can tell <laughs> I got those book of the deads um, DVD special editions right there and so maybe one day I'll do a little video show them to you I'm sure you've seen them already which brings us to uh, the 2013, uh, directed by Fidi Alvarez, the remake, reboot, uh, you know, call it whatever you want. Some people have said that this doesn't have to be a remake, it could actually sort of be incorporated in it. Because um, you see the car, which is, you know, famous for being in most of Sam Raimi's movies. Um, yeah, could be, could be. But anyways... I, you know, most people always refer to it as the remake, and uh, I would say this is a pretty solid remake. We get a lot of gory, brutal, practical effects. Uh, this movie kind of arcans back to the original in a way that it's more serious. It doesn't have that campy humor as much that, that the second and third movie had. Uh, this is just kind of a, a relentless assault on the senses kind of movie. And I gotta say, it does achieve what it set out to do. It's it's very brutal, very intense, and I love uh, Jane Levy. Yeah, that's right. Has uh, Mia as the main character. I think she did a fantastic job, and actually made me want to see more of her. You know, it's kind of sad that we never got uh, sort of a a sequel to this by Fidi Alvarez. And now, of course, at this point in 2020, we know that's not gonna happen. There are plans for a new Evil Dead movie eventually. Uh, taking place in sort of a skyscraper thing, so new characters, something else entirely, but anyways, moving on guys, uh, okay, we get to the Ash vs. Evil Dead TV series, which I love to death, um, and this right here is probably my most valuable uh, steelbook, although, this is not a steel book. This is a metal pack, um, which I got a while back, a couple years ago, and I wish that I, uh, God, I so wish I kept it sealed. But anyways, uh, so now it's in like a little envelope, plastic package, which I've put inside this second piece of protection there. But yeah, um, this one, you know, the prices that I've seen it on eBay are just wild. Um, but yeah, so talking about the TV show itself, though, I loved this show so very much. This is so brutal, so gory, but then again, so stupid and, and campy and cheesy. And I love the characters of Pablo and Kelly and even Ruby, even, you know. I gotta say, this is how you do it, man. This is how you do a TV series and a sequel. Um, this is like a sequel to the original uh, trilogy of movies. And I love this so very much. I'll show you season two and three, which I've kept sealed. Those are all Best Buy exclusives. Uh, I've kept those seals because, anyways, I I've already bought the regular Blu-rays and um, and there I do believe they're still on Netflix now. Uh, but yeah, I I again, I'm just thinking about it now and I'm like, oh yeah, this is definitely my favorite horror franchise. It is so much fun, and and Bruce Campbell nails it once again in here it we were so lucky to get more of him to get more of, of this franchise with the tv show yes it, it really sucks that it was cancelled and i really wish we could have got more uh and and you know with all those new characters too it would have been awesome to have like maybe a a movie to tie it off or well just more actually but you know the way they ended up there it was, it was kind of like a a little wink I feel to the original Army of Darkness ending in which uh, things don't quite work out for him he... <laughs> anyways I'm not gonna spoil all of that but um, I love this show man I love it to death one of my favorites uh, definitely my favorite horror franchise like I've said already so many times <laughs> okay we got to move on to uh, wow yeah Forbidden World right here also in 81 or 82 can't quite remember and yeah <laughs> this movie is uh the closest you'll get to softcore porn in a horror movie and uh i gotta be honest i very recently bought this i saw it and 
I felt like this could definitely <laughs> end up being a little guilty pleasure for me because it, it it's short, it, you know, and it, it goes by very quickly, at least, you know, it doesn't outstay its welcome. And it is, I gotta be honest, it is entertaining. Uh, this is another Roger Corman produced movie, just like uh, Galaxy of Terror. And as opposed to Galaxy of Terror, this one is actually fun. Um, Galaxy of Terror maybe was aiming for a bit more serious, you know, a bit more, uh, you know, yeah, serious atmosphere. This one ends up being very, very goofy, and, and, and uh, but I gotta say, I had fun with it. Parts of it, you know, it does kind of feel like an alien ripoff a little bit with the monster there, uh, especially the designs of it as it uh, transforms. But, um, yeah, if you're in the mood for something like this, <laughs> with a lot of nudity and gore, and, you know, just something like really not serious, then go ahead and, and check this out. Uh, it took me and my wife by surprise. <laughs> at times we were laughing hysterically at just what we were seeing. You know, it was just like, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. And we get to another one that... Uh, yeah. Another Screen Factory Steelbook right here. They love to... You know, that, this is what's so great about them. They release these little movies that you haven't necessarily heard of. Um, and look. This was my first time seeing it a while back when I got it. And... I was not a huge fan, I'll be honest. In a way, it, it'll remind you a lot of sort of like the original Halloween, uh, the pacing of it a little bit, except that, however, it's got probably one of the most boring main villains of all time. Um, and you could say that the fact that he's just a random nobody, you know, an escaped prisoner, uh, it could add to the mystique, sort of, but I feel like it doesn't <laughs> for me. It was just kind of boring. And the kills and everything, they aren't, they aren't even that interesting or good. Um, this is another one that's got a lot of nudity in it, being a slumber party. Um, but I, I just don't buy that girls changing in front of each other like that. And, and eh, you know, it, it, yeah, not great. This is definitely another one that I would say it's, it's not great. Um, you can check it out out of curiosity. It's parts of it, you know, I, I want to say it's not complete trash, but it's also really not very very good uh, yeah another one of those that I, I would say I wouldn't really uh, want to watch again anytime soon okay but then we get to Joe Dante's Gremlins which is one of my all-time favorites um, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people saying it's a it's a Christmas movie sure why not but I say it's a Halloween movie it's a Christmas movie whatever it is awesome it is so much fun this is another one that I was talking about my uncle there who bought me a uh, Evil Dead 2 on VHS and he also got me this on VHS as a kid and yeah I mean, I mean how can you not love this movie <laughs> I fell in love with it immediately uh, and this steelbook right here is doing it's very cute it's very cool there was another one that was uh, the iconic moments steelbooks I was talking about but that one I found was pretty boring so I ended up getting this one here which is gorgeous and actually, like, I love the sequel also. If you haven't seen it, also directed by Joe Dante. I think it's a lot of fun. It doesn't get as, as much, um, you know, good reviews. Uh, but generally speaking, I think it's a great sequel. And, uh, yeah. Awesome little movie right there. This is perfect for, like, you know, if you're starting with your kids. And you're trying to start them with something not too gory, not too intense. Definitely go for something like this, you know. It, it will start them easy and... And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Definitely a, a classic. And this was released, if I remember correctly, in 84. Okay, next up, we go back to Toby Hope. Toby? 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 I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Sorry, Mr. Hooper. Uh, Life Force, which I would say I very much enjoyed. This was like, I felt either it's like very underrated or just people just don't talk about it it might have been forgotten but this is a cool sci-fi horror little movie and essentially about <laughs> i guess we'll say space vampires i'll just go ahead and say it it sounds goofy but it is what it is um it's got a little uh i was gonna say a cameo by patrick stewart it, it's a bit more than a cameo but anyways patrick stewart is in it for a couple minutes but mostly it, this is a very fun little movie um, and if you haven't seen it, I would suggest, strongly suggest you check it out. Uh, what's very cool about this Screen Factory edition right here is that it's got a director's cut in it, which actually adds like a strong 15 or 20 minutes to the movie. Um, and 
even with that, I felt like the pacing still was fine and the movie was actually a lot of fun. So it's funny that Toby Hooper did Salem's Lot all these years ago, right? In like 79. And then years later in the 90s, he would do this, which is like a space vampires, as I've said before. So it's a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. And I would definitely make a recommendation for it. I'd say, yeah, keep it up. Uh, keep, I mean, look it up. <laughs> it's, it's fun. All right. Back. And then we get to 1988 with Night of the Demons. Uh, this is one of those, um, I'd say take it or leave it, you know. Um, I've enjoyed it. And it, it is kind of campy. It's uh, one of those first uh, horror movies, you know, where you see... Um, it's not the first, obviously, it's not the last, but you'll see, like, the, the black guy at the end is, like, the last guy alive. And so that's always nice to see, breaking those stereotypes. And uh, this movie, it, it's, it's very strange, it's very weird. It's got one or two scenes in particular, uh, like that infamous lipstick scene. <laughs> so it's just very weird practical effects there. Um, overall... I, it's not bad. It, this it's got that Halloween feel to it. Definitely taking place on Halloween night. Um, I could see this playing in the background at Halloween party, you know, and uh, you could sort of poke fun at it, but also enjoy it, you know, at the same time. This is this is sort of like a six out of ten for me, or sort of like a six point five or something. <laughs> it's not bad. I haven't seen any of the sequels or like even the remake, but it, it it's fine. Not a bad one. Um, yeah.